Now that our link aggregation is working, we need to put the PCs into the right VLANs. So on port 1, on the first core switch, port 1 needs to be put into VLAN 2. On the second core switch, port 1 needs to be put into VLAN 3. So I'll telnet to core 1. Log in with my username of admin, password of HP. Top system view, display VLAN. At the moment, you can see that only one VLAN has been configured. So I'm going to type VLAN 2 to create VLAN 2. I can give this a description of, let's say, blue VLAN. I'm going to type quit. I'm going to create the layer 3 interface immediately. Now, you wouldn't typically need to do this. This you only do on core layer 3 switches. So interface VLAN 2 IP address 10.1.2.101 display interface brief as you can see gigabit 101 is up and that's the interface where my users connected so system view interface gigabit 101 port link and in this case we're going to specify type and we're going to make the type access. This is an access port. That is the default. So if I type display this, you'll notice that the command doesn't display. The link mode displays, but not the link type, because the default is access. Now to put the interface in the VLAN, you type port VLAN 2, or rather port access VLAN 2. So display this. You can see that this is a access port. That's the default configuration. And you can see that the port is in VLAN 2. Now my PC has already been configured with an IP address of 10.1.2.5. So let's see if we can ping the PC. Ping 10.1.2.5. As you can see, the ping succeeds. Let's do something similar on the second core switch. So telnet 10.1.1.102, login as admin, and the relevant password, you can see that we're on core 2. System view, VLAN 3 will allow me to create VLAN 3. Description, red VLAN. Interface VLAN 3 allows me to configure the layer 3 information for this VLAN. So the IP address is going to be 10.1.3.102 with a slash 24 mask. Display interface brief. At the moment, there's a problem on the switch. The PC should be connected to gigabit 101, but the interface is down. So I'll go and check the cabling. But for now, let's put the interface into the VLAN. So interface gigabit 101 port link type access which once again is the default port access vlan and in this case 3 allows me to put that port into vlan 3 so i'll need to go and check the cabling but hopefully we'll have the same result i'll be able to ping that pc once the cabling has been sorted out in the meantime let's see if we can ping from our PC 10.0.0.249 to PC 2, 10.1.2.5. So on my local PC, ping 10.1.2.5. As you can see, the ping fails. Let's see if we can find out where the problem is. Notice the ping is failing. So, trace cert. And notice there are various options here, but we're going to go for trace cert dash D so that there's no resolution of names. 10.1.2.5. As you can see, the first hop times out. Our first hop or default gateway doesn't know about that route. So it looks like our router doesn't know about that route. So let's tell it to the router and make sure. So telnet 
10.0.0.100, which is our router. I'll log in. So let's see if the router knows about the route. I'm going to use the keystroke Control L, which is a shorthand for the command Display IP Routing Table. This will allow me to see the routing table on the local router. As you can see in the output, there's an entry for 10.1.1.0, but there's no entry for 10.1.2.0. The MSR doesn't know about that route. So rather than creating a static route, I'm going to show you how to configure RIP. To configure RIP, you type system view. You then type RIP and a process ID, which can be any number. In this case, I've made it one. And then you use the network command and tell RIP to run on any interfaces that fall within that command. So in other words, all interfaces which have an IP address in the range 10.x.x.x will have RIP enabled on them. All networks on those interfaces will also be advertised. Now it's good practice to use version two of RIP rather than version one. It uses multicasts rather than broadcasts. I'm also going to type the command undo summary to stop automatic summarization of routes. Please refer to the routing introductory videos for more details on the basics of routing. So that's all I need to do on the router. So on the MSR, I've enabled RIP. I'll do the same thing on core switch one and core switch two. So on core switch one, type system view, RIP and a process number. In this case, I'm just going to be consistent and use one. Use the command network 10.0.0.0. I'm going to set the version to version two. And I'm going to disable automatic summarization. So I'm going to type undo summary. So that's core one configured. On core two, type system view, RIP and a process number. Network 10.0.0.0 version 2 undo summary so hopefully we'll now have full connectivity in our network this is the router so control l will allow me to view the routing table as you can see we've learnt a rip route 10.1.2.0 it was learnt via rip the preference is 100 and we learnt about the route from 10.1.1.101. So, on our PC, I should be able to ping 10.1.2.5. And as you can see, the ping succeeds. If I do a trace, hopefully the first hit should be the router. And this is something to be aware of. HP A-series routers do not allow trace route by default. So, on the HP router, you must type the command IP TTL expires enable. IP unreachables enable. I'll do the same on both switches. So, IP TTL expires enable. IP unreachables enable. And on the second core switch, IP unreachables, enable, IP TTL expires, enable. And let's try and do that trace route again. So trace cert 10.1.2.5. As you can see, the trace succeeds. The first hit is 10.00100. which is the MSR. The second hit is 10.1.1.101, which is core switch one. And the third hit is 10.1.2.5, which is our PC. So we've successfully allowed our PC 10.0.0.249, which is connected to the Cisco router and in turn connected to the MSR to connect to PC2. Now I'm running VNC on that PC. 
VNC allows me to remotely take control of the PC. So let's see if we can connect to the PC directly. 10.1.2.5. As you can see, I'm able to connect to the PC. I can open up a CMD prompt and I can type the command ipconfig. I can see that this PC has two IP addresses 192.168.1.2 as well as 10.1.2.5 and that's the IP address we're concerned with in this topology. Notice the PC has the default gateway of 10.1.2.101. Going back to the router, you may have wondered why we're not seeing network 10.1.3.0 in the routing table. The reason for that is that the virtual interface 10.1.3.0 requires a layer 2 interface to be up before the interface can be up. So for RIP to advertise the network, the layer 3 interface needs to be up and that in turn requires a layer 2 interface to be up. But if we look at core 2, display interface brief, notice VLAN 3 is down down. The VLAN 3 interface is down because the only layer 2 interface associated with VLAN 3 is down. Notice gigabit 101 is down. If we type the command show VLAN, or rather display VLAN, notice there are two VLANs, VLAN 1 and VLAN 3. If we type display VLAN all, Notice we can see that all of these interfaces have VLAN 1 associated with them. Notice please that Gigabit 101 is not in the list. Scrolling down, we can see that VLAN 3 is associated with port 101. In other words, there are no tag ports and only one untagged port, 101. But that interface is down. So the VLAN 3 interface or virtual interface is not advertised. And hopefully shortly we'll be able to ping from our recording machine to PC3. So I've made sure that the cabling is good. On the switch, core 2, let's type the command display interface brief. As you can see, interface gigabit 101 is now up. It's running at 100 megabits per second. On a router, display IP routing table shows us that we now have a route 10.1.3.0, whereas previously that route wasn't in the routing table. On our PC, let's see if we can ping 10.1.3.5. As you can see, the ping succeeds. 10.1.3.5. 